वेलकम व्यूअर्स वी आर डिस्कसिंग मॉड्यूल वन यूनिट थ्री टुडे अवर टॉपिक इज बिल्डिंग एंड मेंटेनिंग हाइजेनिक सेफ एंड क्लीन एनवायरमेंट फॉर एल्डरली केयर एज इज अवर यूजल प्रैक्टिस फर्स्ट वील टॉक अबाउट द थेरी लर्निंग आउटकम्स देन वील डिस्कस प्रैक्टिकल लर्निंग आउटकम्स देर आर फोर थेरेटिकल लर्निंग आउटकम्स द फर्स्ट वन इज हाउ टू मेक हाउस एंड सराउंडिंग एनवायरमेंट safe secure and hygienic for our elderly persons second is to identify the hazards which may cause injuries to the elderly people and also discuss the methods of avoiding the risk of falling slipping and tripping third is methods of keeping the surroundings bugs germs and rodent free finally we'll apply the 3 r approach that is reduce recycle and reuse to the proper waste management as far as the practical learning outcomes are concerned we will like to show you the methods of organizing the room of the house including wardrobes for the elderly persons we will also demonstrate various methods to deal with the given hazards for safe movement of the elders in their living areas so friends first we talk about ways to make house that is surrounding environment also safe secure and hygienic for the elderly people whom we are caring for you know that as an elderly caregiver it is your utmost responsibility to keep the elderly person in the safe secure and hygienic surroundings so how can we make them the first and foremost is the home safety here we have to work on removing hazards that is we have to clear the pathways remove loose rugs or cords and secure carpets to prevent tripping in other words we can say keep the room in an organized condition keeping in mind the requirements of the elderly people wherever necessary we have to install handrails and grab bars particularly in bathrooms and stairways to assist elderly people with their mobility proper lighting because you know that in the elderly people vision related problems are there so there should be proper and adequate lighting in hallways particularly stairs and rooms to prevent any kind of falls accessible home design in cases where the community living of elders is there we can consider ramps wider doorways easily reachable shelves and also the provision for lifts etc can also be there next we talk about comfort and accessibility comfortable living space means ensuring a comfortable room temperature and appropriate cleaning to keep the elderly people at the optimum temperature then we can think in terms of using some adaptive aids so devices such as walking canes raised toilet seats or shower chairs may be considered for easier mobility of elderly people security as i said is of utmost importance they are in the vulnerable age group so locks and alarms should be installed in the doors windows their functioning is proper they have good quality of locks we can even consider installing alarms or a good home security system with a warning in the nearby police station we should also have an emergency plan so this emergency plan which is in place can include contact information for emergency services and the names and numbers of those family members who are there to be contacted in case of any emergency their numbers can be in the fast dialing mode sometimes you can also consider making 
the WhatsApp group of the concerned persons. Health care, regular checkups, we should schedule regular medical checkups and follow up with health care providers. Medical, medication management, we should have a chart for giving them medicines properly and timely. Access to medical assistance, we should provide easy access to emergency numbers and medical assistance devices like medical alert systems etc. We can even consider putting up the medical emergency numbers in place so that even if you are not around, anyone else taking care of them can go for calling the persons under any emergency situation. As far as hygiene is concerned, we need regular cleaning and maintaining cleanliness to prevent, to prevent the spread of germs and infections. Hand hygiene is very important. During Corona, there was a lot of emphasis placed regularly, frequently hand washing with proper hand wash, soap and especially before taking meals and after using restroom. Proper waste disposal. Always use covered trash bins and promptly dispose waste including used tissues and medical disposables. They require emotional support also for which social interaction and family involvement is also recommended. Regular visits from the family members or caregivers to offer companionship and support is the requirement of the elderly people. Next we come for the second segment here to identify hazards for elderly individuals. We have to identify hazards in terms of whether there are any uneven surfaces. So we should look for any loose carpets or any uneven surfaces on the floors and also we should look for any other security hazards. Avoid clutter. So identify and remove objectives which clutter the surroundings. They may be there on the floor. That could be tripping hazards. For example, if any of the charging cord is coming in the way, that has to be removed. Poor lighting has to be checked if there are any poorly lit areas, particularly stairways, bathrooms, hallways, rooms, etc. So that has to be checked. Lack of handrails or grab bars that you note which are the areas where such support is required but they are missing. Similarly, wet or slippery surfaces. Most dangerous are bathroom and staircase. So identify those areas which are prone to moisture buildup like bathrooms, kitchens, staircases, etc. Preventing measures. What kind of preventive measures we can take? The first is regarding floor safety. We can use those kind of non-skid tiles so that the chances of slipping are reduced. Wherever any uneven flooring is there, that has to be repaired on priority. Pathways should be clear. For proper lighting, we should install the bright lighting including night lights in bedrooms, bathrooms to add visibility at night. Installing handrails and grab bars at appropriate places. Footwear and clothing. We should encourage our elderly people to wear those kind of non-slipping footwear indoors and avoid loose clothing which may get stuck in some places. Accessibility and arrangement. Ensure commonly used items are within reach and we should organize furniture to provide clear pathways. So, education and awareness. Educate them about potential hazards and promote the use of assistive devices if needed such as canes or walkers. Sometimes they may be overconfident but try to make them understand the requirement of the situation. Next we come to the third segment that is maintaining bug germs 
and rodent free environment. We should seal entry points of such things. So any gaps in walls, windows and doors must be properly sealed. The food available loosely attracts them. So proper food storage in airtight containers to prevent attracting them. Regular cleaning and disinfectation. Many times we can use the services of the professionals to disinfect the house from termite and rodents etc. So vacuum cleaning, sweeping floors, kitchen surfaces, sinks etc. where such cockroaches and such uh, germs are readily available, proper cleaning is required there. Reducing standing water. So fixing leaks and eliminating any kind of such stagnant water sources. Natural repellents. We can plant those kind of plants and herbs that the pests dislike. Proper hand hygiene has already been explained that properly washing hands frequently will also help. Proper waste disposal, we will talk in the next segment. Good ventilation, where wherever they are living, proper ventilation system must be there. We should inculcate in the elderly people the necessity of personal hygiene. So regularly covering the mouth and nose when coughing or sneezing, using the mask is a good practice, washing hands regularly is another practice. Traps and deterrents, ultrasonic devices or natural repellents to discourage rodent activity that can also be there. Professional pest control. We can use professional services for controlling these things. Finally, we come to the fourth segment of categorizing waste into five categories and applying 3R that is reduce, reuse and recycle approach. First, we talk about organic waste which includes biodegradable materials like food scraps, yard waste and paper. We can apply 3R approach that is reducing by composting organic waste to create nutrient rich compost, reuse as organic fertilizer for gardens, recycle by turning it into compost. Plastic waste. It includes various types of plastic materials such as bottles, bags, packaging material etc. Reduce by minimizing the use of single use plastics which is in any case banned in many places. Reuse containers and bags wherever possible. Recycle by sending plastics to recycling centers. Next is paper waste, which includes newspaper, magazines, cardboards, official paper, etc. Reduce by going digital. Reuse both sides of the paper for taking notes and drafts. Recycle by sending paper waste to recycling facilities. Electronic waste. Discard electronic devices such as computers, mobile phones, batteries, etc. which are discarded constitute e-waste. We can reduce by extending life of our devices. We can reuse by donating or refurbishing them. We can recycle at designated e-waste management facilities. Finally, we talk about hazardous waste. It includes chemicals, batteries, fluorescent bulbs and other certain household cleaners. Again, we can reduce usage. We can reuse containers for safe storage. We can recycle by disposing of them through designated hazardous waste collection centers. Friends, in this particular program, we have been talking about the ways to make our house and surroundings safe, secure and hygienic. We discussed that how we can achieve home safety, security, health care, hygiene, etc. We also identified what are the various hazards and what are the methods for removing those hazards and towards the end of our program, we talked about different categories of waste and how the 3R approach can be used for managing those waste. Thank you.